Welcome to this edition of the AMC News Dispatch. I'm Joseph Gibbons from the Office of Public and Congressional Affairs. In hopes of reducing the soldiers' burden on the battlefield, the folks at U.S. Army Materiel Command's Communications, Electronics, Research, Development, and Engineering Center teamed up with the Army's Science and Engineering Community and Industry for an exercise event at Fort Dix to evaluate various leap-ahead technologies in communication and mission planning, tactical power solutions, condition-based maintenance, and more. To understand the impact of this exercise, ask yourself these questions. How can we help alleviate the strain of carrying too much weight and lower power consumption on the battlefield? How can we better integrate how commanders, ground units, and weapon systems communicate even while on the move? And what about building a system that identifies when mechanical problems arise in vehicles before they cause mission failure? So we're in the process of testing it right now on human subjects at a lab down at Aberdeen Proving Ground. Engineers like Julianne Douglas and Jonathan Navoa from CERDEX Command Power and Integration Directorate evaluated emerging power solutions like the Energy Harvesting Assault Pack, which is capable of generating up to 22 watts of energy while walking and more when running. The system comes in two sizes and produces energy similar to a shaker flashlight. You guys normally carry what, 75 pounds, something like that in your rucksack, right? As it bounces up and down, energy is produced through electromagnetic motion and harvested by a generator that can be used to recharge onboard soldier batteries. The amount of technology that our soldiers are carrying on them now requires more and more power. And so you need to be able to power that efficiently, lightly, and succinctly without extra logistical costs and burden. And this pack enables you to do that. Think about this. Soldiers can carry less batteries, which reduces the amount of weight they carry. Radios, cell phones, and tablets could be charged around the clock without plugging anything into a wall socket. The logistical costs spent for fuel and power consumption also drops, and the soldier can maintain longer in remote environments. The people who had these packs uh, were the only ones with comms after an extended duration mission. So it can extend the duration of your mission if you're pinned down by enemy fire and you run out of battery supply, then you have power to call in that air support you need to get out of there. And then there's renewable energy devices like the foldable solar panel, which comes in two sizes. One that fits right in your pocket that can generate 12 watts of power, and another that can fit in your rucksack that can generate 100 watts of power. So without this technology, we lose a huge piece of what enables us to be the best army in the world. And if that weren't enough, engineers from CERDEC and its sister R&D Center, the Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center, have also created something called the Spirit Vest, or the Soldier Power Inductive Resident Intelligent Textile Vest. It's a mouthful, but this vest allows the soldiers to charge any power source they may have through a wireless couplink on a vehicle. Now as soon as you get in a vehicle, that conformer will get topped off automatically. You wouldn't have to plug anything in or anything like that. Too easy. When the soldier sits in his seat, these four connection points on back of the vest connect to four ports on the vehicle and charges the soldier's devices. This system also eliminates snag hazards and pressure points that come up with traditional round cables. There's a central energy source that shares the energy that it receives, whether it be from wireless or a solar panel. That central energy source tops off all the devices that the soldier might have on their person, whether that's the end user device or a dismounted soldier radio. It's one thing to generate and maintain power in remote environments, but CERDEX engineers have pushed the envelope even further by developing and integrating an Android application called the Soldier Power Manager onto the Program Executive Office's Net Warrior system. It's the handheld tablet device you see being tested there. The Soldier Power Manager app enables the user to monitor energy consumption and receive alerts when equipment is low on power. The benefit here is uh, we're treating energy just like another asset. So when a squad or platoon leader goes outside the wire and they're going to task to do one route versus another, they can now treat energy just like they do with food and ammunition and make a better decision. But this exercise assessment is not just about power. On the battlefield, information is the most important resource a soldier can have. Thanks to the Android applications developed by CERDEC, soldiers are receiving an unprecedented level of situational awareness, tactical data, and secure communications on a the level they've never had before, and all on the same Net Warrior device. Platoon leaders will soon have the ability to transmit and receive vital information to and from other platoon leaders and relay that information to commanders over encrypted tactical radios. They can digitally pinpoint their location and all platoon locations in the same area, provide grids, sectors of fire, drop chem lights, request the manavac, and do SMS messaging. At the same time, they're also receiving real-time data and images from a UAV flying above through another app called the Mission Command Autonomous System, or MCAS. 
The goal is to provide the ground units with a common operational picture in real time to assist in recognizing friends or foes, identifying a potential ambush or sniper attack long before the unit reaches the threat, as well as being able to see inside and around buildings, around corners or over hills. We're trying to increase his uh, situational awareness and decrease his uh, cognitive burden. So there can be many assets around him, unmanned assets, that he doesn't really have to concern himself with that. All he has to say is, I want eyes on this area, and he'll return them. Now, from the UAV operators, uh, those guys will now be able to fly multiple uh, assets simultaneously instead of always being uh, heads down in their uh, control unit. All they have to worry about is launch and recovery, and the system will take over and pilot and find the you know, most appropriate paths. While the soldiers evaluate technology in the field, Army programs of record such as the Program Manager Mission Command are examining the command post of the future. It's called the Simplified Battalion Command Post, and it's the next step in serverless battalions. The ability of expeditionary command posts uh, gives us a tremendous amount of modularity and flexibility uh, based off of our mission set. Um, the, way, the way we fought in the past is not how we're going to fight in the future, and, and the ability to be expeditionary uh, gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, in those capabilities that we're trying to provide. Essentially, the Simplified Battalion Command Post provides additional capabilities that enables the commander to do mission planning on the move through a mobile digital platform, then transition it between command posts. They want their ozone widgets that they're used to in a command post, they want to be able to do uh, email, they want it to be able to do SharePoint, and all those rely on connectivity across a network to a server, basically. So. Um, that's one of the things that we're trying to show here, that uh, capabilities, given the networks which are evolving, we can connect from platforms to servers. Using Android applications again, CERDEC and PM Mission Command are working to provide solutions that are modular and scalable. An app can be standardized across all platforms, and once added on a tablet-type device, it can be moved anywhere, from a common command post to a Humvee or a hole in the ground. There's a lot of discussion about the complexity, size, etc. of command posts, and so we also wanted to show that given modern technologies, um, we could provide solutions, mission command solutions, that are modular and scalable. Okay? So the thought was there, we now have a commander in a vehicle who can do mission command on the move stuff. If I bring a few of those vehicles together and connect them together with the right network, they can then become a command post at the quick halt and using the available comms that are available. Um, and then as time progresses and they want to stabilize that command post, along comes your bigger wind T pipe and maybe the tented type command post, and now it becomes the command post uh, you know, at the long haul. Aside from tactical power solutions and mission command changes, our entire military across the globe feels the strain of dealing with logistics, sustainment, and maintenance of vehicles. But engineers from CERDIC are also trying to solve that problem. We have to reduce the cost. Logistics and sustainment is costing us an enormous amount of money, an inordinate amount that is drawing away resources that could otherwise be spent on giving the soldiers new technologies, better protection. So if there's anything that we can do to help to alleviate that strain, all the better. CERDEC's Space and Terrestrial Communications Directorate has been tasked by the Department of the Army G4 and Headquarters Army Materiel Command to provide a common communication solutions center for all weapon systems, developers, and maintainers that they call Condition Based Maintenance Plus, or CBM Plus. The software and architecture combination is being created to automatically deliver maintenance data from vehicles to data warehouses and other platforms where maintainers and commanders can see the status of their entire fleet, identify mechanical faults and conditions of parts before it impacts soldier missions. So they want to know if you're going to be sending soldiers out on a mission, is that stuff, are, am I ready to go? Am I going to be putting these guys in harm's way because I see an amber light showing up? And I don't know how to treat this amber light and I can't tell the soldiers to stop because they're in a firefight. They have one focus, and that is to complete the mission and to stay alive and come back in one piece. Aircraft have a requirement for airworthiness that feeds CBM data back to maintainers that provides status information necessary to achieve 100% readiness before they leave the tarmac. And the Army ground community is looking to leverage that same near rear time capability in their weapon systems. The reduction in cost is significant over all the weapon systems. If we can have parts ready before they need to be ready and not maintaining a large warehouse of unnecessary parts, the savings is in the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. The Army is becoming a more expeditionary force, and every new capability we've seen helps advance that statement. 
from power to communication in the new exploration in whether real-time electronic point-of-treatment medical care is possible. Well, this is a notification that was sent to the commander showing a positive result for Ebola. Currently, medics fill out a paper tactical casual care card, or TC3, that's attached to the injured soldier before evacuation to the battalion aid station or the command support hospital. In some cases, the TC3 never makes it back with the soldier. With new medical software being built into simple handheld devices and run over a tactical 4G network, CERTEC and the U.S. Army Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center are enabling medics to send medical information from the point of injury on the battlefield back to the doctors for real-time communication and decision making. So once the medic gets the result back, uh, it'll show up here and you have the ability to launch GuideView. GuideView is an app that provides interactive information in a step-by-step -step manner with audio, video, images, and text on an Android device. And it'll give you some options on what to do in case of a uh, positive. Now, when injured soldiers arrive at a treatment facility, their information has already been digitally recorded, reviewed, and evaluated by the doctor and briefed to the commander. The soldier's permanent health record is also updated. In five years from now, when the patient goes into a VA hospital seeking treatment, the care providers can see everything that's been done. Certex Field Laboratories are great for the SNC community, the Army's acquisition community, and industry. The earlier they can catch problems and test capabilities in the research and development process, the better it will be for our soldiers before it hits the field. From Army Material Command Public Affairs Office, I'm Joseph Gibbons.